I'm TQ. I'm JQ. AQ Senior. This is Q with your family, family and the Small Flower TV. TV. We got uh, Abdul Kayum here, father extraordinaire, businessman extraordinaire, and uh, the big boss here at the Apothecary and Small Flower. So, um, we, in part one, we covered you uh, as a disenchanted pharmacist walking into this apothecary, falling in love with it against maybe your better judgment about the, the, what the future may hold. And here you have this community pharmacy which is becoming extinct in this, what is at the time in 1972-73, becoming a, an age of mainstream commercial pharmacies and chain pharmacies. Oh, yeah. And you buy this little community pharmacy focused on herbs serving a mostly European population on the north side of Chicago. And now here you are, you're 26 years old at this time, and um, you've got this store. You've just had me, my mom has just had me, um, and your life must be awesome at that point. So <laughs> let's start right there, okay? Perfect yeah. time in life. Panic sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to say that. But uh, yeah, yeah, panic You're freaking out. No, freaking out because <laughs> no, I just but... bought a building, business, signed my life. Wasn't a lot of money, come, you know, when you look at it today, but at the time it seemed like, my God, I didn't put anything down. They gave me this building, this business, <laughs> and, you owe and, for the, I'm, I'm, and I've got a pregnant wife, and, and you were born six months down the road, seven months down the road, and so, of course, panic sets in, you know, but something, as I said, so at this point you're what? You're doing prescription business yeah, we to were, a lot of neighborhood customers? Yeah, there were, you know, 40, 50 prescriptions being filled a day. And but the thing that makes this place unique is the focus on the European herbal tradition hard and European hard-to-get products, Correct. and you're serving mostly a German-speaking European audience. Correct. What are they asking for when they were Well, there? that was a neat part because I was a trained pharmacist, right? Having had some knowledge of herbs, as I said, because I, was, I grew up with it. So people would come in and say, or people would write even, call on the phone from all over saying, so I had to take this prescription drug. I was sick, but so I need to take a tea to cleanse myself, a blood cleansing tea, they call it, you know, blue thriving tea. Yeah. So I, that was a kind of a, a what? An eye opener? For eye opener for me was like, you know, I mean, in this culture, in this country where I came at Western medicine, people are asking about tea. So of course I learned. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it was, it was a, so I, I learned that you know what there are people in other parts of the world, especially in Europe, in Germany, they were they were not into drugs like we in in the United States were, you know, in America. So it it was a it was comforting, and I was thrown into the situation again. I I call it divine intervention because right around that time, back to nature movement starts to kick in. Now people want herbal things and people are like finding about post, post hippie kind of yeah yeah now have kids kind of thing or what something like just, that yeah return to re you know yeah, early mid 70s kind of people thing. are coming in and saying and they're finding me and i'm a pharmacist knows about herbs by now a little bit and so they they my business starts to blossom and yeah. people aside people, from just the traditional german business you're getting so there are americans, americans coming in not as many <clears throat> not as many as we when we moved here to this location, but anyway, so let me quickly finish that part. So it's like we start to grow. I mean, I would have 50, 60 percent growth each year, just the first two, three years. Wow. You know, it was like, and I started to get very busy, and um, things just just kept going well for me um, around that time. And the way I would find out about some of the products, and I think there was business inbred into me. Some people are just, you know, good for business at business, I should say, there was a, people would come in, German customers, and say, do you have this product, or this book, and this book, and so many people would come in and say, do you have this book, and it was in German, it was, uh, in English, it's now called Health Through God's Pharmacy. Gesundheit aus der Apotheke Gottes. So, this book became, everybody was asking for it, so being a good businessman in those days, we wrote, we didn't even call, I wrote to Austria, located the publisher, got the books, so once I got the books, then people wanted the product from the book. And one of the product was Swedish bitters, which, and some other herbs that were not available here. So now what do I do? So I, I wrote to the publisher, and they gave me a place in Austria, and in Steyr, that, that sent me 
six bottles of Swedish bitters and five would be broke, I'd get one bottle out of it. <laughs> and, and I'd pay for six, you know. I said, oh my God, I can't live like that. So at, at that time, one day, around closing of the store, divine intervention, number whatever, <laughs> I, get a, I get a call from a German pharmacist named Dr. Peter Theis. And he says, introduces himself and he said, I'm here vacationing in Montana and I could, I could come and visit you. I see you sell the book because I was advertising the book in the German papers. Yeah. I have all the products from the book. And I said, you what? And he said, yeah, I have all the products from the book. Wow. And I can come and see you tomorrow. And I said, I'll fly in. So next day was Wednesday. Mom and I went to pick him up at the airport. We at this him. point, you still had Wednesdays off. At yes, the store, Wednesday right? was closed. <laughs> Just had to mention that because that's hilarious yeah. now. Yeah. So Wednesday was. Closed. I say we moved back. Yeah. So <laughs> anyway, Mom and I go pick him up, and we took him to the restaurant to eat, and it was like love at first sight. It's like I knew this man from way back when, and we just bonded became family, you, you guys know now, he is part He's of like our family. Yeah, so, so and, and his family and our family are well connected and we're gonna see him in September, mom and I. So anyway, fast forwarding, he was in the store, makes a call to his factory and says, send whatever bottles of Schweden bitter, 100, 200, whatever. I get it within a couple of weeks, I get all the Schweden bitter I wanted and then the rest became and any product from that book and the book just kept as a matter of fact, around that time, it was so busy, yeah. it got so busy that the, the store over there, I just ran out of room. I even had gotten rid of the tenant upstairs and I was lugging all the stuff myself up the store in a huge steep staircase and, and, and um, got all that. But anyway, even then I could not fit everything in there. So happened. And this was down in the Lakeview section of Lakeview neighborhood of Chicago Correct. on Lincoln Avenue. And the street we're still on, however, we're about we're two miles north, north of that now. In Lincoln Square. And yeah. this building up. If you want to call us back then, it's Lakeview 0518. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that used to be the yeah. phone number. LA Tau, yeah. LA5. But before 0184, there used to be Lake LA5184. 5184, that's what it was 5184. Yeah. At the old store, it was very busy. We were doing a lot of business, and things were just getting to be too hectic. Another divine intervention. The owner of the Chicago <laughs> Brow House, which is four doors away from here. Chicago Brow House. Yeah, Chicago Brow House. Harry Kempf comes to the store over there and he introduces himself and he tells me, he says, you know, you should move the Apotheca, that's what the Germans call the place, Apotheca, the apothecary, to the Lincoln Square neighborhood because that's where all the Germans come. You're in an area where it's kind of isolated. And he just hit the right time where I was struggling with the space and wanted to get out of there. Following weekend, I brought you guys to his restaurant, we ate, and I asked him if I could find a, if he could help me find a building here because I wouldn't be able to do what I would to a retail, uh, to a lease place. And he says, there are no buildings to be had. So I said, well, then I guess I don't move. That was on a Sunday. Yeah. The next morning, <laughs> I get a call from a woman who, owns, who owned this building. He says, I understand you're looking for a building. I said, yes, sure enough. I have the building for you, this building, and I call mom on the phone. I said, would you go look at this building and, and tell me what you think of it? She calls me back. She said, it's big, beautiful place. Not beautiful in the sense how it looked at the time, but it could be beautiful. Potential. A lot of potential. It was in terrible shape. But you would have to spend a lot of money and, um, and a lot of work. And um, I said, again, I didn't even come and look at the building. I bought it over the phone, never. How do you keep doing that? I, I honestly, I said, Mom said it's good. I put in a bid, end up getting the building, and went, hired an architect from Austria who, whom I said to make me a place that would have looked like in Vienna 100 years back in time. I've never been to Vienna, and I, you know, I don't know what it be, but I just said it. And sure enough, he created this place and um, those... Which you can't see here because this office doesn't reflect it, but our store downstairs... Uh, well, anyway, no, I just explained well, it to... Well, we can edit that in. Yeah, yeah. Can, uh, it's, it's, it does look like you're walking in back in time about 120 years. Yeah, and, um, and, and Rita, your mom, um, worked with the architect and created this showpiece for me. And 
moved, I moved it here and at the time I got a little nervous saying, so what if I lose some of the business there, right? My local customers and whatever. Yeah. And I thought, it's then I said to myself, like, yeah, but I said, well, if I can do 90% of what we did or 80%, I, could, I, I would serve my customers well. It's going to be a big place. It's going to be a great neighborhood. Well, as luck would have it, just the move doubled my business. When we wow. bought the inventory, we couldn't even... We couldn't even but it's funny you keep describing it as a big place because now we think of this as a really yeah. small store I mean, that we can't... I thought I had a lot of merchandise there. Yeah. We couldn't, we couldn't even fill the shelves. We had to make one row on each shelf. I remember when we were this kid, we were ten facing. Yeah. You know, like people, you give things a single face, maybe you double face something. Yeah. Not in our store because we have no room anymore. Yeah. But, but at the time it was like, what, you, you were a German, you had German products primarily yeah. and herbs, oh. but you also, you needed, to, so what happened? You were like, you had nothing to fill the shelves. No, so, so for, I, said, I always say first thing, for some reason I heard of Caswell Massey. All this, yeah, all this apothecary in New all York, chemists in all this chemist in New York, and they had a shop here in Chicago uh, in the water tower place. And so I called them in, New, in um, New York and they turned me over to the rep here in Chicagoland area, Merchandise Mart. Anyway, I ended up ordering my first order, it was in November, I think. We got this order from Caswell Massey, which we filled some of the store with. <laughs> and. Did that, was that the entry point for all body yeah. care? Oh, right. that's, that was yeah, the first and that was the move, I think, if I understand, if I remember, away from being a European, far, specifically apothecary, but pharmacy-based, yeah. to being what we start to now call apothecary, which Correct. was a unique mix of natural health and personal care. Because Caswell Massey was your first non-German or non-European personal Correct. care, right? Correct, and then, of course, you know, the rep that had that line also had some other lines, and then of course they told other reps, and yeah, you yeah. know, so I mean, then all of a sudden I had all these reps coming in and telling me, yeah. so we ended up is buying the, Is this around the same time that the, the expo started to happen, or the natural products expo started to exist? Right, then we started going to that. Yeah, there was a natural products industry. Yeah. But also, I mean, your, well, yeah, your specialty. Yeah, I mean, so, so again, product, yeah. I always wanted to incorporate homeopathy, and I didn't know what to do about it. So again, divine intervention. When I wish for something, I, I somehow end up with it without even knowing how it's going to yeah. happen. So one day, downstairs, I'm in the store. Of course, I was here all the time. I was the only pharmacist. And then somebody, one of the staff says, oh, there's somebody in the front who wants to see you. And I go out there, and he... He introduces himself, this gentleman, and he says, I'm Dr. Joel Shepard. I heard so much about your business, so I want to see if you would consider carrying homeopathic products. <laughs> you believe that? And I said, and that's Joel, I? So Joel I said, Shepard is a very well known. Yeah, yeah, he's a father the, of homeopathy yeah. in this part of the world, and yeah. probably the oldest practicing, you know, for the most part. Yeah. And Scooby teaches and trained yeah. a lot of people, a lot of doctors. So, anyway, so I, uh, I said, but how would I put the, you know, how would I know what to put in? He said, I'll help you. I'll pick out the inventory. He calls Jay Borneman from Borneman and Sons in those days, which was taken over by Boron at the time, uh, soon after. So Jay flies in with Bill, with Bill Nicoletti. He was a pharmacist. So two of them come in, fly in for the day, meet Dr. Shepard in the store. They create an inventory for me. <laughs> I didn't know what the I was rest saying. is history. Yeah. The rest Holy is history. Wow. Now, now we became we are we're, we're one of the largest homeopathic pharmacies in the country, yeah. and it was all from this meeting. Yeah, so that was chance, circumstance, yeah. or so, divine anyway. intervention, as the case yeah. may be. Divine intervention, <laughs> number eighteen by now, I think. Um, so, but at this point, you're freaking out, business wise, oh, personal, personal wise, because it's too much stress, it's too much oh, business. Right? Yeah, and oh. This is very important. So Dr. Shepard says to me, you know, anytime you need a consultation, uh, let me give you a, f a complimentary con consultation. So um, Dr. Shepard offers me this consultation, and I didn't even think much of it, and I was going through such stressful time in my life because I was so busy, and I had no help to speak of. I just had auxiliary help. You know, I You're part-time people. Part-time. I mean, I had full-time too, but... But it was not anybody to manage and anybody that could take a lot of my responsibility. So I was ordering, we're not computerized, obviously everything was by hand, ordering in from my head, 
you know, making orders, sending them to Europe, whatever. I did everything. I could not sleep for days and nights. I could not, you know, I would go on without sleep or maybe one or two hours of sleep. So I went to another practitioner. He was an actual practitioner. And he gave me a whole bunch of remedies and things. And, and then um, nothing helped. So he ended up prescribing Halcyon and Xanax, which you can imagine, I would never take that. So, because he said I had to go to a sleep disorder clinic or something, you know. And um, so, it occurred to me that Dr. Shepard had offered himself to me. Yeah. So I went over to see him. That was a life-changing experience. I went there on a Wednesday. He used to be in an apartment here in the north side of the city. And he gave me, spent an hour and a half with me, gave me some sugar pills, I called them at the time. And I, you know, popped them in my mouth and he sent me home. I went to work. Then 6 o'clock when, when I got home that day, I started to feel like I was coming down with a flu. And I had forgotten that I had taken any pills or whatever. I said, I'm just coming down. He gave you a constitutional medicine. Oh, yeah, he gave and me And so the idea behind homeopathy is that if you get yeah. something that might... Oh, yeah, I was going to come to yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so I he gives me this. I go home. I say to Rita, I'm going to lay down because I don't feel so good. I'm just going to go upstairs and lay down. So I go upstairs and lay down. Now... Dr. Shepard had told me that this is a constitutional remedy, and if I've hit the right remedy, you may get symptoms of some things that you may have had in the past. Now, as a child and as an adult, after we were married, I took mom back home to Pakistan and, and, and um, contracted malaria a couple of times in my life. So he said, if I've hit the right remedy, you could experience symptoms of malaria. Now, I didn't think of it. I thought, yeah, sure. So, <laughs> seriously, you know, so I, I go home and I'm laying there and as the evening goes on, I am getting chills and shivers and I'm shaking and n not enough blankets could keep me from shaking. And so wow. I t I'm, I'm calling, I'm telling mom, I said, call this guy and tell him what the hell did you give me? <laughs> you know? and, and so she calls him and he takes the call and he says, he assures her that this is an aggravation from the constitutional remedy because in homeopathy, it's like when you suppress the symptoms by taking allopathic medicines, it becomes like the layers of onions. You know, it's like you suppress the, sym of the symptoms of the disease and some other disease pops up and some other, ultimately you, you have... You start peeling peeling back. Yeah, you know, you're peeling back, so you could you get things in the worst order. Yeah. So I did get all the way to malaria and probably typhoid-like symptom because I've had typhoid and things like that. So it's amazing. And that, that day... After How did day, that affect your soul? Oh, yeah. my, I had no trouble sleeping after that. It was yeah. like my constitution yeah. changed. He hit. So obviously made a believer out of me and I'm a big, a big disciple of Dr. Shepard and homeopathy and I could talk about it for hours on... Another video. Another yeah, video yeah. So anyway, so, <laughs> <laughs> so this happened so we started homeopathy and and I felt better and 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 customers found us because there were nobody no no homeopathic pharmacy so we just kept getting busier and busier and busier and my other oh around that time I thought you know what I can't do this alone and I looked for a pharmacist and I looked so hard, every pharmacist that would come in would say, so how many scripts do you fill? And I'd say, you got you the know, wrong idea, pal. Yeah, I mean, obviously they At were this not. point you're filling what? Two oh, prescriptions? Yeah, maybe five, maybe three, you know, but... Completely opposite of what every other pharmacy yeah, and in yeah, the country is doing. Yeah, and, 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 and our business is now growing and growing and growing. So. I'm going crazy, and I say, so what you're, do I do? You're, can I just stop here? You're seeking out, so the Casual Mask thing we were talking about earlier, like you're now seeking out unique brands from around the world, American brands, European oh, yeah, brands, yeah, yeah. anything that kind of falls between the cracks, which is what we do now, Correct. is not, Correct. not mainstream products mostly. And I'll go one step, because when I first took over, Mr. Murs would say to me, you know, he trained me, stayed with me, and we would have the drug salesmen like it used to be Gazola drug in those days, like dick drugs or whatever. Yeah. So the salesman would come in and say, we got this deal where if you buy these band-aids and you get so many free and this, you... So I started buy these deals and put them in the front, you know, band-aids and bandages yeah. and stuff. And he looked at me one day and he said, 
you sure you want to do that? And I said, why not? And he said, look, they can buy this stuff anywhere. Don't on me. The, you, you need to find things that you can't others... Get anywhere, yeah. Right. So, yeah. sure enough, it didn't take long, and I said, I'm one of these people who gives credit to experience and people who have walked before me, they can tell me and I'm going to listen to them. And sure enough, I, I changed the, the route I was going to take and then just... So here you are, you're looking for a pharmacist. Yeah, I'm looking for a pharmacist expensive. and I'm going crazy and I'm, I've spent a year looking for pharmacists. They all come in and nobody really is, just excites me in terms of if they could be of big help to me. I'm sure they were probably very good pharmacists in the, what they could do. And they didn't understand what I did. And you were ideally still ser served a, lot, a fairly good amount of, I mean, a good, a fairly good percentage of German-speaking oh, customers. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you wanted someone, ideally, who could speak German. Oh, yeah. So we, we, or it, had it, that, some of that tradition, this, right? This area was more German still. It was necessary, still. the language, I think. Yeah, that was part of oh, yeah, that was part of it. So, divine intervention number 19 or 20, whatever. <laughs> Mike Winter, who is our manager, part owner of this business now, because... I made him a partner so he never leaves, <laughs> then I don't have to be here all the time. And, um, and I found him, he was born in Austria, he, he has played professional soccer, and he was a pharmacist. U.S. World Cup. Man. Yeah, right. So he came in, and he didn't know anything about the nat what, natural stuff, but he's smart, and he learned, and he, he, learned, quick. he learned quick. And, uh, and of course, I was the best teacher you could ever have. So. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, teaching at this point is him going on vacation and leaving him a book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and he spoke German. He spoke and German. he's and he's growing up the next guy. Yeah, he knows a lot of people. A lot of people because growing up in all these soccer clubs and things. And the German clubs. Yeah, and the German clubs. So a lot of people knew him. So it was like another boost to MERS is to have my yeah. winter, you know, yeah, and sure. to me, of course, and to all of us, so, yeah. and to the community. Because, and still is. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I couldn't do what I do without Mike, so to Yeah, me, yeah, right. Awesome. So, anyway, um, that happened, but we're still, now Mike joins us, and we're still not computerized, we're still doing things, he and I are running around like chicken with our heads And in the meantime, this neighborhood, Lincoln Square, which is where you move the store to when you describe yeah. that, is... Demographics boom. change. I mean, let's, it's fair to say, probably one of the most amazing neighborhoods in yeah. the country. Yeah. Right? right? It is right now, and at that time may not have been yet, but was no. on the verge of changing right. into one of these, retaining the characters of an old European Chicago neighborhood, but also enjoying everything Chicago has to offer, and it's probably one of the best walking neighborhoods yeah. in the country. Property right? values yeah. just went up crazy. And, and, and you have this influx young of families, families, young American families, who are looking at What's that? The strollers came. Yeah, out. And looking for a neighborhood that has a lot of character, that is maybe outside of the downtown area like mm -hmm. Lincoln Park and Lakeview, which have been, they, Our, many people have been priced out of that market to become sort of a, almost like a suburban mindset. And could places. recommend a natural bu bu body bu uh, bubble bath for their kids. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say, and what happens <clears throat> is that the young mothers start to come in with their uh, babies yeah. and want the alter an alternative to the chemical things. and. Uh, you know, we all know that's another topic we can touch sometime about allopathic medicines versus, you know, natural. safe or natural. So, anyway, people wanted safer things for their kids, and so we were just here all the time, pharmacists available, speak the language, have the knowledge, have the product from all over the world. You know, I mean, what, you know, I've, yeah, I've traveled. That's well. a pretty unique combination. Yeah, I've traveled a lot. I think by I, this time. Yeah, I've yeah. traveled a lot, and I don't think I ever find a store like ours. I really no, I think that's true. Know. Yeah, so anyway, by this time now, we're not computerized. We're we're going crazy. We're, as I said, Mike and I were. You You're know, doing a lot of mail order at this point. Yeah, too. mail order and phone orders. Mail phone orders, mail orders. We used to take out an ad in the, the Your German magazine called the Hausfrau, which later became the it was politically incorrect, right? it was politically it was the housewife. The housewife. So now it's called the window of the Spencer. So um, they they um, um, that that magazine has you know I used I had an ad started out with a little two by two and towards the end like we have eight That's full eight pages, pages of eight pages, eight pages. Yes. and yes. people yes. would write to us when they had a subscri subscription problem to the magazine because they thought we owned the magazine. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway we we did very well and we would get a stack of letters like this every day or practically every day. Certainly twice a week we would get a stack of mail wow. with checks in it. 
and we didn't take any credit cards up until we moved here. So at the old store, we didn't take credit cards. And so, and so you'd have to fill out, like, I remember cash coming, people would send like a oh, hundred dollar no. bill. Oh, how about there was customers that were so trusted that they would just order what they wanted. Dad would send it, then they'd send yeah, a check. Yeah, yeah. that's. that's I think there's real still two of them, one of those left. I don't I think anybody's left anymore. I think there's one. There's, one. there's one. There's one. Yeah. There's one who still has on their account. Go ahead and send it. Oh, okay. Uh, they can pay afterwards. <laughs> yeah, Russia probably. Yeah, I think so. Oh, but anyway, so um, so here you are. Yeah. Here so, you are as Papa Carey. Yeah. So no, I'm just coming. So now we're. At the point where Mike and I are struggling, the growth is so immense, we don't know, we're not computerized, we're still writing things, we're ordering, we're growing. He and I are going crazy. And in a good way. In a good way, yeah. Keep so, so you're struggling. Struggling, and, and then, uh, Anthony, you graduate college, you're sitting in New York at that point. Let's leave that for the next time. The no, no, but I, I just want to say that I, my wish was that one of you would join me in business. Well, let's finish it off with suspense. I'm, I'm, I'm in college. You tell me you're going to bring Mike in. I say, that's okay. I don't think I'll ever want to join yeah, the business. Right. So, it's okay, Dad. I love it, but it's not for me. Yeah, right. And so there I am. And here you two are going crazy. What will happen? Yeah. We'll visit <laughs> next time on Murr's Apothecary, the radio hour. <laughs> no, but right? It's uh that's no, that's, yeah. where we, that's, where, yes, that's where we that's where we can leave off. But here we are. Yes. We're we're in this neighborhood that is going crazy and we have this business that is very unique and it's really at this point it isn't a traditional pharmacy at all and yeah. there's no place like it and it isn't a traditional personal care. It's not like department store beauty, it's carved out this niche which every anyone who's visited our store knows that's what we rock. Oh, at. I mean my god so on Saturdays we'll figure out how they just keep everybody comes in and it just from morning till evening when we close, we I don't know how many people come in. Keep it's the yeah. best. We have the best customers in the world. Yeah, they yeah. keep saying thank you for allowing us to shop, or thank you for being here, and thank you for helping us did whatever. And then, of course, they anybody that comes to visit them, they all want to bring yeah, yeah. that to. I love when people bring their parents yeah. or their friends yeah. here anybody, to you know, see the about Thank you, guys. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah. But we'll finish up the history to get to the current day with next episode, probably in a couple weeks. Uh, take care of yourselves. Thank you. Thank you. Cool.